seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right, so hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to put a video out there that is going to be um, six life hacks for your dog. These are going to be medical life hacks. They, they are um, six things that I believe every dog owner should probably know about and educate themselves on. Hey, sir. Aspen! So these things are all going to be related to uh, different situations that you might be put in as you own a dog. Um, it's going to relate to poisoning, to uh, the, your dog's intestinal tract, to parasites, everything. Um, we're going to try and cover the majority of things that you might have to expect when you own a dog um, to be put in a situation that is an emergency situation or even just a situation that's a bit scary for you. Um, these things are going to give you some knowledge and preparation on what to do. So first things first, I'm going to put out a disclaimer. I am not a veterinarian. I have worked in vet clinics for six years and I study infectious diseases at the master's level. So I am well educated on physiology and stuff like that. Um, and I do have a lot of experience in vet clinics, but I'm not a vet. So just keep that in mind. These are all things that I did learn at vet clinics from vets. So um, it's up to you, completely up to you if you want to use these ideas or not. All right, so the first hack I guess medical hack you could say whatever you want to call it is hydrogen peroxide so this is something that every dog owner should have in their cupboard at some point this is very important for dogs that eat absolutely anything um, it is the go-to method of inducing vomiting in your dog so let's say your dog eats pills on the ground you come home you see a bottle of Tylenol that's completely empty on the floor, this is your go-to thing. Um, so any dog that eats anything, for example, my dog ate a peach pit, which is, if it's digested, is toxic to animals. I had to induce vomiting with hydrogen peroxide. Normal dose is usually a half of a spoonful for a smaller dog, so like a Chihuahua or a um, Shih Tzu and a full spoonful for medium to large sized dogs. So like my dog is a medium sized dog, so she got a full spoonful of hydrogen peroxide. It usually acts probably at least within five minutes and you can give a second spoonful if it did not react the first time around. It just upsets their stomach very quickly and it induces vomiting basically in, almost immediately. Um, so this is a great thing if your dog is not that trustworthy around the house if you find out that they ate something that they shouldn't have. Um, the one thing with hydrogen peroxide that I would say is you have to know when your dog ate the thing that it ate. So if you were to walk in after being gone for an eight hour shift, walk into your house and see pills on the, or a pill um, vial on the ground that's completely empty. I would be hesitant to use hydrogen peroxide just because you don't know when your dog ate the pills. I would just rush your dog to the vet. But if you know that your dog has eaten the pills recently, then you can induce vomiting and get rid of all of those pills that are in the stomach. Um, but you have to know when your dog ate what it ate. I also would be very hesitant to use hydrogen peroxide if your dog ate something sharp. So you don't want to induce vomiting if that thing can penetrate your dog's esophagus, if it can cause holes to be punctured in the esophagus while the thing is coming up. So anything like if your dog ate chicken bones that can be splintered, you don't want to induce vomiting because you're going to hurt your dog a lot more than you're going to help your dog in that situation. So yeah, that would be my first hack. Hopefully this helps a lot of people out because I know there are a lot of dogs out there that will eat absolutely anything. And if your dog gets into something that it shouldn't have, then this is a really good thing to know about. All right, so the second hack 
that I have for you guys is to tell whether or not your dog is dehydrated. Um, there's a very easy way to tell whether your dog is dehydrated or not. Dehydrated or not. <laughs> dehydrated or not. Um, and that would be the skin tent method. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Very, very simple thing to do. And it helps you um, understand whether your dog is dehydrated or not. Another thing to help with dehydration is also to feel inside of the gums of your dog. If it's nice and wet, then that means that they are well hydrated, they've got enough water in their system. But if you feel in there and it's really sticky, it doesn't feel smooth, you can't really run your finger over their gums without having it stick too much in there, then that means that they're not producing enough saliva, which means that they are dehydrated. Well, with dehydration, like I said, is a skin tent. You go right to their scruff right here and you pinch it up just like a tent. If it jumps back, so then if it jumps back up to normal, it would be totally hydrated. If the skin tent, when you pick it up like that, stays up, then they would be dehydrated. So that's a good way to tell if your dog needs some more water. She, she's tired of me now. So that might be something where you see your dog and they're really lethargic and you're kind of figuring out why they might be that way. You want to check if they're dehydrated or not because just like humans, if they are dehydrated, they're not feeling very good. So that would be something that you can quickly take care of, get them a lot of water, get them rehydrated again, and they should be feeling better. So those are two ways to tell whether your dog is dehydrated or not. Okay, so the next hack that I want to give you guys is that probably most pet owners should try to own a thermometer, um, specifically a rectal thermometer for your animal. So you can get these at every vet clinic, I would say. You could probably order one in. You might get some strange faces because vets don't usually get very many requests for thermometers, um, but it's a good thing to have around the house to tell whether or not you should bring your animal into the vet. The reference ranges for a thermometer are very different. I'm going to give it to you guys in Celsius because that's what I use, but if you want to change that into Fahrenheit, you can look it up online and tell whether or not, tell what values that should be. So usually for a dog, anything that is above 39 degrees Celsius would be considered to be a fever. Anything that's slightly above isn't too much to worry about it, but if you're, you know, if you're well over, you know, 39.6, 39.7, 39.8, um, getting into, you know, 40s, that would be something that you would definitely want to get your dog in to see a vet about. As well, you have to worry about lower temperatures, so if you have anything below 37.5, I would say, um, then you have risks of hypothermia and there's definitely something that might be going on as well. So you have to be careful of low values and high values. So those are my reference ranges. There are very different reference ranges. All right, I am losing light, so I'm gonna do this fast. Um, so <laughs> the next hack that I have for you guys might be considered a little bit disgusting, but I think that every uh, dog owner should familiarize themselves with a poop chart. And <laughs> there's two different kinds of poop charts. There is um, a poop chart on formation, and there's a poop chart on color. And you can look those up online. They're really easy to find. Just type in poop chart, and it helps you with understanding what your dog's um, intestines may be going through at that time. So let's say you have a dog that has um, very yellow poop. You might then look at the color chart and say, okay, well, you know, there's probably maybe something wrong with the liver or with bilirubin levels because that usually causes yellow poop. Or if you see very black, black poop, then you could tell that there's probably blood in the poop and you want to get your dog to a vet. It also helps to know the formation of the poop, whether it's normal or whether it's uh, very mucousy or whatever it may look like. Look at the poop chart. 
It helps you understand what is going on in that area of your dog. So the next thing that I would recommend um, everyone know about is any type of emergency situation, the things that you should do in response to it. So look up CPR on a dog, look up the Heimlich maneuver on a dog, know where you can place your hands, what to do in a situation like that. It's also important to know um, seizures in a dog and what to do uh, with regards to seizures. So it's kind of just like, just like people really get them on their side, make sure they're not near anything that they could hurt themselves on, make sure that their um, mouth is clear of any fluid that could be blocking their ability to breathe. So those things are all very important. You can find charts online about how to do CPR as well as the Heimlich maneuver on your dog. So I'm going to give you guys a demonstration on how to find a pulse rate on your dog. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, to tell if your dog's breathing or not, to just watch the, the rib cage and make sure that they're breathing. Um, but pulse rate is a little bit harder to tell if, if your dog's heart is actually pumping. So to take a pulse, just place your hand in between their leg, the outside of their leg and the inside of their leg, and you push down with your um, fingers in and you're gonna feel the femoral artery right there. And you have to sometimes just place yourself a little bit different, different positions, but you will eventually find it right on the inside. I got a good pulse on her right now. And that's how you tell the pulse rate. Usually you can count for 10 seconds and multiply it by six, or 15 seconds and multiply it by four. Another thing that you might wanna do in an emergency situation is to do um, a capillary refill time in your dog. So this would be something like if your dog got run over by a car um, to tell whether or not there's internal bleeding in your dog. Really easy to do. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So I'm gonna put a video right here um, to explain how to do it. Capillary refill time. Go near the canine, press down, release, and you see how quickly that white goes back to the pink color right there? Yeah, so that's capillary refill time. One to two seconds is normal. Usually anything that's above three seconds would be abnormal. You're also going to see that your dog's gums are normally nice and pink. Um, and if they're having any type of bleeding inside, then they're gonna be really, really pale, almost white. So those are the things that you can do. So this method helps with telling whether or not there's internal bleeding. Um, if there is internal bleeding, then the capillaries that are in the gums aren't gonna fill up very fast at all. And the gums themselves are gonna be quite pale. So that's a good way to tell how severe something is when you have to deal with a um, a dog that's been run over, something like that, um, to tell how long you have to actually get it to a hospital. You should always take your dog to the hospital if they get run over by a car, but there's situations where it is absolutely essential that you get your dog to a, to a vet very quickly, and that would be if there is internal bleeding. So now you know how to tell whether or not there's internal bleeding in your dog. Um, so try it out on your dog, practice a bit, and you'll become a pro at it. So the thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about next is um, muscle spasms and parasite protection. Usually we use topical liquids to prevent parasites. So you've got your revolution, you've got your advantage, there's a lot of um, over-the-counter stuff that's also sold in uh, in pet stores, stuff like that. And if you overdose with those topical liquids, that can cause muscle tremors and spasms in your dog. It doesn't allow the, um, the channels that are in the neurons that are exciting the muscles, um, it doesn't allow that excitatory signal to die down. 
And so you really have to just get that stuff off your animal immediately if that starts to happen. And the hack that I have for you guys is uh, something that every single person is going to have in their house, and that is uh, dishwashing detergent. <laughs> and this stuff is very important to have for those situations because it is one of the most powerful methods of getting oil off of your dog's skin. And all of those topical liquids have some type of oil base to them. So the fastest way for you to get rid of that stuff on your pet, if it's causing an allergic reaction or if it's causing muscle spasms, then you want to bathe them with dishwashing detergent. I know it sounds kind of kind of strange, but it works. So yeah, so if you have applied a topical liquid for parasite prevention on your dog or even on your cat and you start to see just completely um, wild muscle spasms and tremors. It looks like they're having a seizure basically, but it, that, it, I mean, it just doesn't stop at all. Um, you want to immediately get in contact with your veterinarian. Definitely do that. I'm not saying don't do that, but another person can be trying to bathe your animal with dishwashing detergent very quickly. It's important to also keep them nice and warm after you've bathed them. But yeah, you, you want to be able to bathe them with this very, very quickly and get it off. Um, the best way to do that would be to take a very shallow tub, something that's very shallow because your dog or your cat is not going to be able to stand when they're having muscle tremors. So you don't want to have something that could drown them, right? Um, but yeah, you want to get it off really fast. So yeah, so use this in that situation and it should help a lot. Um, yeah. So I hope that those were helpful. I hope that it gave you some things that you can keep in the back of your mind and remember in a situation that uh, could potentially save your animal's life. And I hope to do a uh, kind of hacks, life hacks video on grooming as well because there's a lot of tips and tricks that I learned in the grooming trade that would be very helpful for um, dog owners. So I will try to get that up as soon as possible, but I wanted to get this one up. I think that it's going to be helpful for a lot of people. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone watching. If you liked this video, you can always give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, you can always subscribe as well. And yeah, thanks again. Have a great day, you guys. See you later.